Okay, uh, welcome to our class on uh, Hallmark Greeting Cards. Um, what we're going to do is um, uh, give you a little presentation on how you can make your own greeting cards. Um, why would you want to use a, um, a greeting card program? Well, there are a lot of reasons you may want to do it. Um, greeting cards have gone up quite a bit in, uh, in, in price uh, since the old days. So you can save quite a bit of money by printing your own. Um, the other thing you can do is you can save a lot of time. Um, you don't have to uh, drive over to, uh, to a card shop or to Walmart or wherever to, uh, to purchase uh, cards. Um, so it's a convenience factor there. Um, you can express your own creativity. You can create all kinds of unique cards and we'll show you all the things you can be able to do with that. Um, and the other thing these days um, with the internet, um, people like to send cards uh, by email or post them out to Facebook. So you can create e-cards and uh, with an e-card, um, you avoid the postage. And of course, postage has been going up uh, considerably every year. So that's another good reason why you'd want to use a, a, a greeting card program. So what would you need to, um, uh, to make your own greeting cards? You're going to need basically three things. You need the software program to do it. Um, you'll need a color printer. Um, I mean, you can do it if you have a, a, a black and white laser printer, but, um, but it won't look as nice as if you have a color printer. Um, and you're going to need some kind of a card stock, uh, the paper that you would be using to print the, uh, the cards on. Um, if you're going to be sending the cards over email, uh, then you don't need the printer or the card stock. All you need is the software program itself. So let's take a look at the program that we're going to be talking about tonight. It's the Hallmark Card Studio. Um, the prices I'm showing on there, these are actually list prices. And they um, usually around this time of year, they start coming down in price. They get have all the uh, uh, Black Friday sales and Christmas sales and all. So you should be able to see these for significantly less. Um, usually they come out with new versions every year. Uh, currently, uh, the 2020 version came out uh, at, at the end of last year, and I would expect the 2021 version will be coming out shortly. Um, I have not seen it yet, so I would imagine once that comes out, if you wanted the old 2020 version, which is the current version now, it probably will come down in price. Um, the, um, it's available for both the Mac and the, uh, and the PC. Uh, for the PC, the deluxe version is $49.99. Uh, that's for the Windows version. Um, the difference between that one and then they have the non-deluxe version, um, which is either $39.99. I have seen it also selling for $29.99 in some places. Um, the, the difference there is it's basically the same software. You just have additional cards. Uh, uh, that um, so you have more things that uh, that you can use. Um, the uh, the Mac version is uh, is actually the standard version. It's not the deluxe version, at least for 2020. Uh, but they do charge um, um, mm. 39.99 for that one. I don't know whether they're going to have a deluxe one for 2021 or what. This is what's currently out there. Um, Okay, the second thing that you're going to need is the paper that you're going to be using, the cardstock. Um, uh, now, Sue uses, um, I think you're using um, regular uh, cardstock, I, I believe is what you, you mentioned, Sue. I use regular uh, cardstock no, on, on occasion. Uh, the only difference between the ones that Shelly is showing you here is that when I fold my cardstock over, I have to create the fold, whereas the ones that you uh, purchase that Shelly is showing here, the, the, uh, the cardstock is scored. So when you fold it over, you get a real clean fold. Right. And th these, are, uh, th these are the ones that I use. Um, it's the Avery number th uh, 3378. And these come in a box of 30 along with the envelopes. And they are scored. So you can, after it's printed, you can just fold it in half. Um, 
And uh, these are textured. You, they are also available if you prefer the non-textured ones, the matte finish, you can get them in matte finish. There are all kinds of different cards. Um, Hallmark has its own um, box of cards with envelopes, um, uh, which is similar to this, except of course, if it's got the Hallmark name on it, you're gonna pay a little bit more. Um, this one is in particular, I'm just showing an example. This was a price actually off of the uh, Amazon website. So it sells for $12.98 to give you an idea with free shipping. Um, these are available at Walmart. They're available at Office Max. Um, so you can find you know, the, the stock for greeting cards um, uh, pretty much um, uh, around everywhere. Um, th these are typically, they're going to be eight and a half by 11, but when you fold them in half, uh, then you're gonna get the, um, uh, the half, half size uh, greeting card. Um, you can also fold, you can use even regular paper as long as it's like a heavyweight paper. Um, and the greeting card software allows you to use the um, quarter fold as well. So if you wanna make a smaller card, you can do it with a quarter fold, just fold it twice. And it does let you print it that way as well. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you a quick video on how the software works. And, and then Sue is going to uh, actually do a, a demo on, uh, on how, um, how she creates cards and show you how to do that. So let's just show our video first. Hallmark Card Studio makes it easy to create personalized Hallmark greeting cards and other print projects. In this video tutorial, I'll give you an overview of Hallmark Card Studio's basic features so you can quickly get started creating your own greeting cards, invitations, calendars, scrapbooks, and more. When you launch Hallmark Card Studio, you'll see the home screen where you can browse the different card categories. You'll find birthday cards for all your family and friends, holiday cards that range from Admin Professionals Day to Veterans Day and everything in between, Special Days offers cards for anniversaries, religious celebrations, graduation, retirement, and more. Day by Day will help you find the right cards for wishing people congratulations or good luck, plus thank you and sympathy cards, as well as many more everyday greetings. And finally, in other projects, you'll be able to create calendars, 3D cards, postcards, matching party sets, certificates, and many other print projects. Let's start our project and pick out a birthday card by clicking the birthdays button. Here, you'll find that we can scroll through the entire collection of Hallmark birthday cards. We can even filter down to different categories of birthday cards by clicking on the categories in the left panel. We can also look just at milestone birthdays by clicking here. And we can further narrow down the selection by clicking here. To go back to viewing all birthday cards, just click on all. Another way to narrow down your search and find the perfect card is to use the search bar. Let's type in cake to look at all the cards with cake in the birthday category. If you click on the All Projects button, you can view any project within Hallmark Card Studio that has a cake image. Even projects outside the birthday category are shown here. It's easy to make the card previews larger while you are browsing by using the Zoom tool. Just click and drag to make the previews larger or smaller. When you mouse over a card, two buttons are revealed. Click on the heart to save a card as favorite for easy retrieval later. To see all your favorite cards and projects, click the favorites tab at the bottom. The other button that shows up when mousing over a card is the preview button. Clicking here lets you see all the details of a card right from within the browser. Just click on the card to magnify. Clicking and dragging the hand tool allows you to pan across the card. Let's look at the inside of the card by clicking here. To customize your card with text, greetings, photos, and other enhancements, simply click on the Edit in Art Studio. You'll be amazed in all the ways you can personalize your Hallmark card. Over on the left, you'll see buttons for various enhancements. Use the top buttons to navigate between the front, insides, and back of your card. These buttons allow you to add text, greetings, shapes, clip art images, photos, and photo frames to your projects. I really like the design of this card, but it would be even better if the text was personalized for my friend Jennifer. With Hallmark Card Studio, it's easy to change the text and personalize a card. Clicking once on the text brings up the text toolbar, where you can change the font, 
increase or decrease its size, make the font bold, italic, or underlined, adjust alignment, change the color of the text, check spelling, and even apply a variety of text effects. The toolbar can be moved by clicking and dragging. To make it larger or smaller, click on the plus or minus buttons. To customize text, just double click. Now type the new text to personalize this card for Jennifer. We can drag the text to reposition it. Now let's navigate to the inside of the card. We can personalize it more. First, we'll customize the text the same way we changed the text on the front of this card. Let's also add some birthday clip art. We'll click on clip art and select the category food and drink. We'll scroll down and select this image of a cupcake. You can easily reposition and resize graphics by clicking and dragging. To get more precise controls, we can use the edit toolbar from the tools menu. Now that our project is finished, we can print the card, email it as an image or as an animation, save the card to work on it later, or use the share button to post it on Facebook. Let's save the card so we can return to it later. After printing or emailing a card, you'll have the option to save information about the card you just made into the card history. Now you can keep track of the cards you sent to family and friends so you never repeat. To use this feature, click OK. Then, type in the name of the person you made this card for and click OK. Now, when you are browsing cards, you can click the History tab below to view your card history. Click on the Note icon on the card to see the details on when the card was printed and who it was given to. That concludes our introduction to Hallmark Card Studio. Now you're ready to start exploring Hallmark Card Studio and begin creating your own personalized greeting cards and other projects. Okay, now we're going to turn it over to uh, Sue Weens, who's going to uh, give you a, uh, a demo and talk about how you can create your own cards. Susan? Okay. Turn okay, please. Go down the bottom and do it then. Well, we practiced this before. I'll share then. Okay, here we are. Well, I've never done this before uh, to an audience, so bear with me while we uh, kind of just uh, create a card and you saw what was on that tutorial. Uh, this is the opening screen and we're going to do birthdays. So I am going to click on the birthday tab and as you saw in the tutorial, you have all kinds of options. If you were going to do a sympathy card, you could do it to uh, somebody for their brother or their father or mother. Uh, you can do holiday uh, greeting cards and everything, but we're gonna do this birthday card. And I just happen to have one here that I'm, I'm going to choose because I've already practiced this one. But I'm the whole library of cards would come up and I could go through and pick out one I wanted for. Uh, whoever it might be, and I'm going to uh, preview this. I want to see uh, for sure that I want to do this card. So this is a birthday card, and I'm just going to take a quick look inside. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. This is the card I want to use. So I'm going to go into the art studio. Uh, over on the left-hand side, you can see the, uh, the front of the card, and then the left inside, right inside, and the back. So this birthday card that I want to send, uh, it says I can add or um, add a title or a name here. So I'm going to create this uh, card and I'm going to do it for my favorite aunt. And I'm going to okay it. Wow, well, look at that. I've got uh, text, this little red box over here tells me I have got uh, too big of text for the box, so I'm going to enlarge that. And while I'm looking at that, I don't even like that type font that I've chosen. So I'm gonna go over here and there is hundreds of type fonts in there. And I'm gonna choose one that I really like and use a lot. And that's up here. 
and uh, oh gosh, it, it looks really nice. But again, my type is too large. The little red box over here says, wow, you've got too big a type. Over here is a little number box and I can go in there and I can enlarge that up to about a hundred or I can take it back down and make it fit in that box or, or make the box bigger. And oh, I, that's too small. My aunt is hard of, uh, can't see very well. So we're just gonna make it a little bit bigger. Oh, that's perfect for my favorite aunt, Donna. Uh, I'm gonna go on the inside and on the left side, you know, I usually send her a little note when I um, send her a card. So I'm gonna open a text box and I'm just gonna write to her and just give her an update on everything that's going on at my house. And I'm just gonna do all kinds of things like that. And oh boy, that looks great. She's gonna like hearing from me. Oh, well, I'm gonna enlarge that box so it doesn't look so awkward sitting there. I'm gonna move it around a little bit. And again, I don't like that type font I've chosen, even though it's probably good for her to um, uh, read it. I'm just gonna make it, uh, I don't like that one either. Oh, let me go. Hmm. Somehow or other, uh, we'll do that one. It's kind of a, a script and it's gonna be hard to read, but I'm gonna make the type a little bit larger and then maybe it'll be, be a little bit easier. So, wow, that, that looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here to my right side of the inside of the birthday card. And I'm thinking, okay, this, this says everything I wanna say. Oh, the type looks pretty good. Um, maybe I don't wanna have that in a different script than the other one. So I'm gonna change that to something else. We're gonna do that. Oh, that looks terrible. I'm going to go up here on my upper left and there's an edit button. Wow, I'm just gonna undo it and maybe what I had the first time looks okay. So, um, okay, now I'm gonna go to, uh, now my card looks pretty good, so I'm going to go to the back of the card. This is fun. There's the Hallmark um, logo, but down here on the third line from the bottom, there's a box, and in it, there's a little type that says, created for you by me. Well, that's pretty generic. I'm going to double click on that type, and I'm going to put my very own logo in there, and my logo Wait a minute. Shoe Goddess Greetings by Susie. 2020. Okay, so there's my logo. Whoa, that looks pretty. Can't even see that. Go back up to my little numerical box here, and I'm going to make that look a little bit better. But Boy, that's still pretty generic. I'm, I'm not so sure I like it. So I've got a lot of choices up here. And as you can see, uh, I enlarged the, 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 the type font. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to kind of make that, I don't even know what that's called, like a three-quarter circle. But for some reason or another, that's not my favorite type font. So I'm going to go back up here into the C and there's my favorite type font. So it kind of looks a little dressier. Well, wow, that looks kind of bare there. I'm going to use some clip art. They did this on the tutorial, so I'm going to use some clip art. And there I can use just about anything, food, drinks, school, sports, flowers. But my favorite one is under beauty and fashion under footwear. And I'm going to add my favorite pair of high shoes that I can <laughs> never wear anymore. Well, that's too big. Okay, we're gonna square that box down a little bit. Get it up like that. Move this down. So I think that's pretty classy. If you know me, you would probably say, yep, yeah, that's the kind of shoes she would love to wear, but can't anymore. Okay, you know what? I just remembered that there was something else I wanted to tell my aunt. So I'm going back to that inside left uh, paper. I'm gonna click on my, my writing here and I am going to just write a little bit more, tell her something else, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now I'm done. So I'm gonna go back to the front of my card for my favorite Aunt Donna. Memories are some of the few true things in an ever-changing world. And so all the way through, I'm just clicking over here on the left, I'm gonna do another 
um, just overall to see what's going on. Um, I think I'm going to do a, uh, what am I calling this, Ralph? I'm going to do a spell check oh, yeah. to make sure that I've got everything spelled right. And, well, they say I don't have, well, of course, <laughs> I don't have anything spelled right on that box because it's all just letters. So I'm just going to pretend that, that I have it all good. Okay. No, Susie, go to the first page and do a spell check. I know I didn't spell page <laughs> yet, did I? But I, I didn't want to take a lot of time. But I, yeah, okay. I, I spelled it wrong, Dolly, but thanks for correcting me. <laughs> so, so anyway, well, Susie? I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to check, um, get back there, and I'm going to correct favorite because otherwise Dolly will never let me hear the end of that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Susie? Yeah. Living there in Florida. Um, can you put on your own signature on the right hand side? Well, I'll tell you what I like to do, uh, Gail. I like to make my own hugs and kisses or, you know, blessings and sign my name. I could put my own name on there if I wanted to. And That's could true. I do it with a signature? I would have to probably do it with a type font up here on the. Um, the upper sure. left, and I could put a, um, a signature on there. I would just have to add a text and put um, whatever I wanted oh. to. Oops, <laughs> too bad. I'm in a hurry. Okay, so I could do that, and then I could change that into a really pretty type font, uh, something that was script if I wanted to do that. But personally, for my own doing, I usually love to sign it on my own. Okay. But that isn't, you know, that is an option. Now I've got that on there. I just have to um, delete it. It's, it was still highlighted in that box that I originally started. But, you know, I thought of something else that I wanted to do. My aunt just absolutely loves certain colors. They're better to uh, read. So there's a color box here and I could go in there and I could just put some simple color in here. You saw where I highlighted that box and I could make that purple or lavender or green or anything like that. And I say, okay, and there it is in that color. I can do that with any of the type that I have um, personally. Now, if I went back into, into this, I could, I could change the color. I could change the, the type font. I could do anything like, um, like that. I could make it larger. She's hard, uh, hard for her to see. I mean, I could, I could make that way up. When I do that, look what happens. It kind of gets out of its, its text box. So I would have to double click and I'd have to go in there and correct that and um, make it a little um, easier to read. The other thing, oh, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go back up here to my edit box on the left, upper left, and I'm gonna undo. I might have to undo it a couple, a couple times to get that back the way I wanted. But- um, Susie, can you just use the undo that's in that panel just to the left? The one that you mean the one up here? No, no, the one just to okay. the yeah, right there. Yeah, you can do a lot of things with that. I've Dolly, I've done this for so many years that sometimes I there's some things that I find are easier because oh. I've done it, you know, and that, mm -hmm. that's kind of what happens. But if if you're doing it like that, Dolly, that's perfectly fine. Um, th there's some other boxes up here that I'll just uh, call your attention to. You can make the print bold or italic. You can underline. Now, this is one um, that I kind of like to do. So, uh, I'm sort of a like things spaced really perfect. So I can click on this and there's one here that will align it all to the center. Hmm. Or I can go back and left align it or I can right align it. Well, that doesn't look very no. good. So I would go back to probably the original the way they had it. So there's, you know, there's all kinds of things that you do. Oh, I know. I'll tell you what. I haven't sent a picture of my dog to my aunt for ages. So I just clicked on my pictures here. Well, there she is. I'm just going to put her picture on this card. <laughs> She's going to love getting Liberty's picture. And... Um, so let's see, we could put a photo frame on there. We could add more clip art. Um, there's 
shapes of all different kinds you can put um, that may have some meaning on something you're doing, such as that. If your aunt is a card player, well, then you could do that. Now, there's one, well, there's one other thing. I'm going to cancel that out of there. Um, now, before I go to print this, I have a couple options that uh, I would want to do. Number one, I would want to save it because I have more than one aunt. And if I save this one today, I'm going to save it to a folder that I have called greeting cards. And I have all these greeting cards in here. You can see one right after another. So I would save this one and I would, um, I might put 2020 favorite aunt and I would save it as such. So now it's in my folder. I can go back. Well, what happens if I want to send the same one to my favorite Mary? And Donna won't know, but there we go. We can do it for Mary. Everything she's doing. So, um, Shelly, oh, I'm going to go to print and then we're going to ask if you have questions and I can go back and oh, no, Shelley, uh, go. Oh, yeah. uh, let me just see left side, right. Side. I'm just looking at my. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, in order to print. I would have to say you I've already done this with my computer and my printer, but you would have to go in here and you would have to set up your printer as to how you would want it. But I want to call your attention over here to the left where my arrow is. I have um, a choice of cards. Now I'm going to do this card as an eight and a half by 11 card stock. And it's going to my, my printer is going to let me print it on both sides. But if I wanted to, I could make this into an eight and a half by 11 that I'm going to fold into four, you know, fold it over and fold it over a second time. And then I'm going to get that little card that's going to be, oh, you can't, yeah, you can mm -hmm. see it. It's, it's a, the fourth of a size of an eight and a half by 11. So anyway, that, now my, my recommendation on this, it's very hard to fold cardstock into this double fold here because it won't line up. It's hard to, to get a nice crease on it. So if I were going to send this one to Aunt Mary, I would print this on a nice piece of um, white paper, fold it and, and well, it could be colored paper, whatever, and um, fold mm -hmm. it up. And then I would use an envelope such as this size. But otherwise I'm gonna use a, a five by, Shelly, is it a five by seven envelope? Well, it's, yeah, it's an eight and a half by 11 and a half. So that's five and a half by eight and a half, uh, by, um, uh, eight, and, by eight and a half, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So anyway, that's, that's the options you have as far as printing. Or if, um, if for some reason you wanted to do uh, a single fold of the front and a single fold of the back, and then you would put them together, one inside the other, and you can tie a nice little ribbon around to keep them together. That, that's how I figured that out. So you have to set up your printer, and you're gonna have some instructions uh, from Hallmark that you have to follow as far as uh, configuring two-sided printing. It's going to ask you if your paper goes in the front, is it's a front feed or it could feed from the back down into the printer. Those are uh, different adjustments that you have to find out uh, for your printer. So by the magic of my doing this this afternoon, I've already printed my card and I just did it on plain white paper, not cardstock. Oh, okay. I can see it. Susan. Over here. Yeah. Okay. There so there's my card. And on the back, I have my logo. So if, if you get into doing cards, get yourself a logo, whatever combination it might, you know, might be dog lover or we love Sadie or whatever it is and put a picture of Sadie in there. Uh, but anyway, uh, and, and let me tell you another tip. The before you get into this too deep, and you print cards and you ruin your first card stock and then you ruin the second time. Do a printout on just regular paper and then go to your card stock. And then that way you won't 
ruin the cardstock. You might ruin just one easy piece of paper. So anyway, um, going back, I believe um, I'm going to backtrack here. Oh, where am I going to go? Uh, I'm going to go back. Our um, narrator on the tutorial, she said that there was a place that we could go and um, we could keep track of this card. Well, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to print. I guess I'm going to print this because I want this box to pop up. The, the printer is going to um, print that out. Come on here. Now, this is where they said you could save this information on this card. And uh, you can, if I say, okay, I can say this was for Aunt Mary and today's date. And then it's going to save it for me. And then I will know who I sent that card to so that I don't send Aunt Mary or Aunt Donna the same card two, day, two years in a row. Um, or you can, if you have two sisters and you want to keep track of which card you sent to which sister which year, that's um, the purpose of that. So anyway, Shelly, can we go to questions? Yeah, why don't we uh, take questions on, on what Susie has just done, and then we'll go on to uh, e yeah, So if you have questions, uh, shoot your questions out right now. You can just unmute yourself. Okay, I'm going to show this. This is just what printed, and the and the dog's picture is on there, which my aunt is just going to absolutely love. So anyway, this morning I didn't print the dog on the inside of the card. I just wanted to show you a picture. So anyway, okay, I'll shut up and you can ask questions. Susie. Yes. You know the commands on the left of the screen about how you want to print the card. Yes. If you have that downloaded on your computer, do you still have to make adjustments on your own printer? I know you said you have to tell, does it go in the top or the bottom or whatever, but will that just, I mean, will it automatically print on your printer? It should. Uh, here's what it's asking me the first time. The printer is an, an inkjet or a laser. So if I say it's a laser, which mine happens to be, and then I go to the next screen, then it wants to know, I whether see. I have a front feed or a top feed. Once you configure it, it should never need to be reconfigured unless you get a new printer or a new okay. computer. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? Questions? Questions? You know, Shelly, I just have questions yeah, Mark, about- yeah, uh, You stepped on mute yourself, there you go. Yeah. If you wanted to uh, send it, how would that be sent as uh, two JPEGs or one? Oh, yeah, that? I'm going to go into that in, in oh, a few you months. Are. Okay. Yeah. okay. But Shelly, about the cardstock, um, is there a certain weight that you recommend? I found that uh, like the 65 pound weight seems to work the best. You're right. Um, that's quite, that's actually pretty heavy. It doesn't have to be that heavy. Um, the ones that are made, like the ones that I was show <clears throat> showing on there from either, you know, Avery or Hallmark, uh, I think they're usually like about a 28 or 30 uh, range. Um, so, yeah, you don't want to get it too heavy, depending on your printer. Some printers won't even accept it if it's too heavy. No, yeah, I was using a heavier cardstock and it was kind of putting it off center, so that didn't work. Yeah, you need to check on, on, on the uh, in your printer manual and make sure you know what the maximum is that your printer will accept. Now, you know most printers will accept the you know the um, uh, the ones that they sell in the packages like the Avery that I showed or the Hallmark uh, greeting card stock or or the you know standard stock, which like I say is usually usually in the range of about a, you know t uh, between um, twenty five and thirty. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ralph wanted me to tell you, he's sitting right next to me. He said, this is so easy that even he can do it. <laughs> but but I, I, wanna, I wanna add one more thing in here. I first learned to print cards on the first computer I got in 1995. I haven't paid Hallmark a penny for greeting cards since I learned this. And, we, and, and one of the things, uh, we find out that someone has passed away, whether it's somebody from our church or the neighborhood or whatever, and I can sit down and print a card and have it in the mail the next morning or even the same day if it comes to that. 
and I have um, I have a number of sympathy cards that I, I I've saved them, and I I probably have maybe fifteen or twenty, and some of them are really my favorites. The message is beautiful, and I just keep those on handy so that I can just print them immediately. Or Ralph will say, "Oh, we need to send a card," and then I sit down and and it's in the mail immediately. I don't have to run to Hallmark, but I have saved a fortune. Uh, on uh, greeting cards, whether it's Hallmark, American Greeting, uh, over the years, I mean, I can afford to buy new shoes about every other week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I, but I do understand that at the dollar store, they do have some, some bargain cards, but I absolutely love this. And I get a lot of compliments from friends and neighbors, whoever, you know, they, they just love my cards. I guess the question, Susie, that would follow that, how much colored ink is being used on these mm -hmm. cards? Well, on our laser printer, I think it's very economical, but I will tell you maybe on the inkjet printer, not so much. And so sometimes you, when you look at some cards, um, you might not want to find one that's big, bold colors, uh, you know, the yellows and the oranges and the reds. You might want to look at something. If you've got a choice of 10 cards and one of them is really big and bold, yeah, well, that could use a lot of ink. And um, so you might get something that's just a little bit more subdued. It depends on how many cards you're going to do, but I bet, I bet we do 100 cards a year on this program. Oh yeah, if the card is pastel, like the one that's on the screen right now, that won't, it, it's not as intense and won't require as much ink as a, as a card that has a much, uh, a deeper image on there, deeper colored image. Uh, and you know, you have, I'm just gonna find that like we're talking about, whoa, uh, this dog here, there's a lot of ink in that brown and black and same with the red. So I might choose to um, uh, find one that's just maybe oh, a little bit um, less color. Special people. Um, that reminded me. Oh, there's a little zoom button here at the bottom. So when your cards pop up for the first time uh, that you're going to uh, start looking for one, what I can't read that. So I go over here to the zoom and I get two cards and I, I can look at them. I can go up and do a preview and, um, and read them much better. If I open this card, oh boy, that's hard to read. But look, there's this little hand that moves it and enlarges it. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And if you didn't like something that was on the card, sometimes they're on there. And what happens is you, you, know, you can delete them. Um, oh, I have to be in card studio, yeah. studio yeah. to delete it. But the thing is that you can take some of the stuff off of there. I can just delete that and... Um, where am I going to delete it? You can just hit the delete. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah delete that, and I can get rid of that. Or I can add my own that I like better. Um, this one, oh, darn. Back, yeah. This one, the whole design is one thing. And, and I can't go in there and remove something. I can change the type font. But because of this is all in one, it's kind of like a frame on there, I guess I would call that. Um, you either have to delete it all or leave it on there. Yeah. You ever email the card? Well, Shelly's going to talk to you about that. I have not emailed, so I'm going to learn something tonight, too. Shelly, are you ready to jump in unless there's other questions? Yeah, any, any more questions before we go to emails? Anyone else have a question? Yeah, just unmute and shoot the question out. Share your screen. What, should I get it done? Oh. Are you going to use my screen, Shelley, or do I need to no. close? Um, yeah, you can close your screen. That's fine. Oh, goody. How do I do that, Ralph? Uh, I can I can handle that for you. You're going to do it? Okay, yeah. thanks, Shelley. Yeah. So, okay. So then I'm going to uh, show you how to do uh, email codes. Who is Ralph? It's not me. Okay, so uh, yeah, here's. I was just gonna pick a card at random. These are just a bunch of um, Thanksgiving cards. 
So we'll just pick a card here. Okay, so if we wanted to, um, uh, to email the card instead of printing, um, as Sue was saying, you know, we you come down over here on the left hand side, it gives you the option to either print, email, save or share. So she was showing you the print and I'm going to show you how to do an email. Um, now there's a couple of things that you need to know. Um, when, okay, if, we, if I click on email, it's going to, first of all, give you a couple of different options. Um, the first option is to make it into a, um, an image file, a JPEG file, um, which is basically a picture of the card, of the, um, the, the front of the card and the inside of the card um, showing side by side, just like you're seeing now. So that would be an image. It, it makes a picture of it. So you have a JPEG and then you can insert that into an email. Um, there's a couple of other options as well. Um, one is to make it an AVI, which is a video. If you select an AVI file, um, and the Hallmark software admittedly is a little bit limited um, because not everybody's able to, uh, um, to easily open an AVI file. So, you know, if you had to uh, convert it to uh, an MPEG or an MP4 file or something like that, that's more easily recognizable. You know, sometimes different people have different um, you know, either a PC or a Mac or an iPad or a phone, uh, and they don't always uh, have the ability to open AVIs. But if you were going to uh, do this with the AVI, what it does is it allows you to add in music. So if you wanted to add music to it, you could, you have a choice of all these different songs you can click on, and, um, and then that will play music along with the, uh, uh, along with the card. Mm -hmm. um, you can also adjust the timing of the card because what it does is it, it plays it as a uh, um, as a um, uh, as, as a movie, so it can be a short or a longer one depending how you want to do it and depending on the length of the music. Uh, and you can put a title in there as well and and that type of thing. The other thing you can do is if you don't want to have it a, a to be a um, um, a a movie with uh, with um, background music. Uh, you can turn it into a, um, uh, a GIF file, which is basically uh, just a moving, um, it's like a little short video, um, but there wouldn't be necessarily any music with it. Um, and what that does is, uh, you'll see that right now, it's, it's just showing you the outside of the card, and then it goes to the inside of the card, and then it goes um, to the, um, uh, think, yeah, to the back of the card. So you, it just kind of makes a a quick animated um, opening and closing of the card. Uh, and then you would you can save the card as well, save that image. Now, he, here's the, um, the problem sometimes with, with this particular um, software is uh, if you click email, let's say you've picked the, um, either the GIF or the image file, the JPEG, um, and you click on email, it's gonna want to open it up with a, uh, an email program like Outlook or um, whatever email program you might be using. But a lot of people today are using uh, web browsers and email in web browsers. So if you're using something like Gmail or Yahoo Mail, it's not gonna work for you this way. So here's an alternative way if you do, are using Gmail or Yahoo Mail or Comcast Mail, what you would wanna do is you would wanna save the image first as a JPEG, um, or let's say you were doing it as a JPEG file. You just click on save the image and then it allows you to uh, save this anywhere you want. And um, so that, now you have a saved file that you can insert uh, into an email and then you would open up your email program. So, so let me go back now to uh, Close this and open up. Wow. Okay. 
So here, here's an example of a card that I recently sent to, uh, uh, to my sister-in-law. Okay, it's a birthday card. And now this is done in Gmail. So like I say in Gmail, um, you cannot just click on the email button in the Hallmark program because this is a web browser. Uh, it's not a dedicated program. So what I do is I just saved it as a JPEG and the JPEG now is showing up. I just insert that into my email. Um, now different email programs work different ways. Um, with Gmail, you can put it in as an attachment um, and they also allow you to do it as, a, uh, as a, um, an inline photo. So I've done it both ways and I usually actually prefer to, to put in both ways and the reason for that is if you um, uh, click it, if you, if you do it with the, um, uh, with the attachment, okay, they can open up the attachment uh, and that works out nicely. But some, some people don't realize that, oh, you have to click on it to open up the attachment. So I also include it as an inline photo just so that they can see the image right from, uh, from, the, uh, uh, right from the email without having to click on anything. So it, it kind of works both ways for people that aren't as, um, uh, as computer uh, uh, savvy. Um, and, and you can see also here, I've signed the card with um, uh, using just the, the, uh, the font in the greeting card program. Uh, you pick uh, any font you want and then you sign the card. And, and if it's an attachment, and they do click on the attachment, then they're going to see the entire card like this, which makes it nice and big, and then they're able to see that. So that works out very well. Um, okay, then going on to um, uh, envelopes. You can also print um, envelopes with the Hallmark uh, thing. It's, it's, as you can see here, actually, you have even more than envelopes. For the, uh, you, can, you can do business cards with this. You can do calendars. You can do address labels, all kinds of things. But uh, primarily, you know, I usually use it for the cards and for envelopes. Um, and you can basically pick any different type of envelope you want. Um, if you're using the card stock that comes with the, uh, the envelopes, you basically just pick your, your envelope once because then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna copy the same envelope over and over again so you don't have to keep going back in here. But the first time through, you would pick the correct size envelope uh, that you want to use. And then you would open it up and then you could put in, uh, you know, your address and you put in the person that you're sending it to. Um, you can add a frame. You don't have to put in a frame, but you can add a frame, nice frame to it. You can, I, I put in clip art, as you can see on the left, you can add shapes and clip arts and photos and whatever. And I put in a little photo frame. So, you know, whatever you wanted to add to that. And then all you have to do um, is, you know, is F, after you do that, is you print the envelope the same way as you would print the card. So that's pretty much it as far as um, uh, email and, uh, and envelopes. So yeah, now we'll take questions on everything. Uh, Shelly, I'm, I'm gonna jump right in here again. I noticed in my uh, box with my software that I received uh, this little uh, pamphlet. It's probably about 40 pages and it's, it's, in, it's instructions like I've given you today, like you saw in the tutorial. So it's, it's really a nice little booklet that comes with the software. And uh, that would perhaps help you if you forgot how to do something or, uh, you know, if you're just starting out, this would be helpful for you. Yeah, and, and the program itself also has a, um, uh, a help. Uh, oh. There's a step of the menu at the top. There's, you know, just like if you were using Word or Excel or any other program, you can just click on help and uh, it's got a search on there. So you can either search for it or you can look through the index of contents for uh, whatever subject you're looking for. And, uh, and usually you can find the answer pretty, pretty easily. Okay, more questions? Just unmute yourself and feel free to shout out a question. Can you have fun? Can you text a card? I'm sorry, what was that? Can you text a card? Like you send an email, can you send a text with the card? Um, uh, well, yeah, you could, you could, it's, it's a, when you're saving the, um, uh, saving it, let's say as an image, so you save it as a JPEG, um, it's just an image. So it's, you can text that just the same as you would text, you know, a photo uh, that you would text to somebody. Yes, you can do that. 
Um, you can also uh, post that on Facebook. So if you wanted to, you know, on Facebook or Instagram, you now have a JPEG and you can put it out there. Yes. Okay. More questions? Okay, did you, did you folks find this helpful? Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. Thank you very much. Yes, yep. thank you. Good. Okay. And then, uh, folks, don't forget we, on uh, this coming Thursday, that's just uh, two days from today, um, we're having our monthly meetings now. We're doing them virtually. So we are going to have our, um, uh, our November uh, meeting uh, virtually over Zoom. And the presentation topic is going to be on iOS 14, which is the, uh, the new iPhone, the Mac uh, uh, operating system, the uh, Apple operating system for the iPhone, and, um, uh, and then Android 11, which will be the new one for, uh, for Android phones. So um, be sure to uh, join us on Thursday morning. You will have to bring your own donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shelly. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Okay, anyone else have any questions or anything? No. Mm -mm. Okay, see y'all on Thursday, hopefully. Thank Thanks, you. Shelly. You will. Good night, Donnie. Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Leave the meeting. I'm telling the left. Now, right how hand. do I get out of this room?